private sector expressed them because the running government has opened a door for, for these illegal immigrants to come into the country. Therefore, the, 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 the private sector uses that opportunity and uses it against the country and uses it against you, the young person. Any brilliant idea that you have as a young person, as an entrepreneur, to start your own business will then be funded through the state-owned bank. How can we stick with the old things that we're working for 1994 and back then, and we're into, we are 30 years in the future of democracy, and then we still want to use the things that we established 30 years ago? Let's be honest, South Africans, we can't be led by Amap and Dint. Spread the fire and welcome back to SMWX. And today we are really excited to bring you the first of a new series that we're going to be having on this channel to do with election debates. Many of you in the comments of our videos have asked for a debate format. And you know at SMWX, we are here to deliver. And so today we have our first debate series between the Patriotic Alliance and the EFF going into the 2024 election. And the question really is, why should young people vote for your party? Before we get into the debate, however, let me explain how the format is going to work for our debate series. So you know on SMWX, we're all about making sure that people get an equal amount of time, that the debate is fair, and that you as the audience get to make up your mind in the end. So let's begin by explaining how it'll work. Each speaker will get three minutes to make their opening case without interruption and then the opposing speaker will get the exact same amount of time three minutes to make their opening case so that's the opening round of arguments then there will be two rebuttal rounds or response rounds where speakers will be able to challenge or engage with the arguments that have been made by the other speaker again for three minutes each then there'll be an open round where i can ask questions to each of the guests and they'll be able to respond and get an equal number of questions and then they will sum up their case. Our timekeeper and producer, Oradile, will make sure that both I and the guests stay within the allotted amount of time. And then ultimately, it's up to you to make up your mind in the comments about who you believe made the most compelling case for this debate and who you believe walks away with the first SMWX election debate series trophy. So let me introduce my guests before we start off. And representing the EFF in the red corner, <laughs> uh, we, we've got uh, Nubile Mthombo, who is not only a member of parliament, but is also the convener for youth and students of the EFF. Nubile, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Cesar. Greetings to you and uh, your viewers. Uh, thank you. It's nice to be here. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm really glad to have you. And then from the Patriotic Alliance in the green corner, we've got Cabello Pizzo, who is the Deputy Secretary General for the Youth League. Thank you for having me, Cesar. It's an honor to be here, and I'm glad to be representing my party as we're leading to the elections. It's great to have you. So let's kick off with our first round. And Nobile, we'll start with you. Why should people, and especially young people, vote for the EFF in the 2024 election? Uh, people should vote, uh, especially young people, should be able to vote for the EFF. In fact, it is the only option for young people to vote for. The EFF has fought for fees to fall in institutions of higher learning uh, since the time of fees must fall. You will know that it was a struggle that was led by the EFF and championed by the EFF. We have made sure that we every uh, academic year, at the start of each academic year, we run the Sizofunda Nkani campaign, Sizofunda Mahala campaign, meaning that in the institutions of higher learning, we have campaigns where we assist young people from different walks of life to come and register uh, to start to further their education at the institutions of higher learning. We tell them that even though you do not have money, just come, the EFF will ensure that you are placed, the EFF will ensure that you also get accommodation. So those are the campaigns that have been run by the EFF, not now because it's election but since the inception of the EFF therefore every young person of this country should vote for the EFF you should look at the representation of um, young people in the structures of the EFF it's mainly the youth uh, mainly women uh, so the EFF really what we say we, we, we practice what we say is not just something that we do for lip service but it's also represented in our structures in the different uh, legislatures councils and parliament the EFF has been championing issues of young people who are saying that education should be free until 
graduation uh, completion of undergraduate level it should be compulsory and it should be for free we should be able as a government to provide uh, enough spaces at institutions of higher learning for all people to, uh, young people to be absorbed immediately after their matric so if you vote for the EFF, we, it's not only a promise, it's a commitment. The EFF does not make promises. We make commitments that every young person will get access to higher education of what is what we are looking for in the country. Now, since we will be aware that um, every uh, matriculant uh, writes it for an exam, they complete their matric, but there are not enough spaces at the institutions of higher learning to absorb all this crop that has just left matric now. It's going to be a disaster. Other um, students will not get to be placed at any institution because there's no space. But under the EFF government, that will not happen. Why will it not happen? Because the EFF in all uh, the mineral uh, cities will then be able to open a uh, satellite campuses in order to accommodate young people you look, look at rustenberg at the campus at, at a, a area like rustenberg where there's mineral resources the eff is looking to open satellite uh, campus uh, satellite campuses so that we are able to absorb these young people who have just completed a metric and are looking for for spaces so every young person should do justice for themselves and vote for the eff to get quality decolonized free education but also to get access to funding how to get access to funding the banks play a critical role in getting funding the eff is looking to do a state-owned bank to ensure that there's pro a proper funding for for every young person who's looking to be funded so that's what we're offering as the eff to every young person in south africa thanks very much mobile and uh, gabelo floor is yours. Why should people, and especially young people, vote for the PA? Okay, we have a lot of young people who are idle, sitting at home, not having jobs, not trying to apply to universities, but they don't get entry. So, us as the PA, we are going to uh, bring a uh, military service so that every young person, after you finish matric, you're going to the army to serve there. You're going to get training, training that will help you so that even after you finish that military service, you can be a better person with a lot of skills, which uh, will make you attractive to employment or to opportunities or to businesses. So that not only will the military service help you with training and all that, but it also reduce crime. We have a lot of people who are doing nothing, sitting at home, not, not, not doing anything positive. So if we send you to military for training, you will have a, a positive thing helping you to become a better person in your society. The reason why we have a lot of crime, especially by young people, is that young people are sitting at home, not doing anything progressive and productive. They are a problem to society because they don't have anything positive helping them to become better people in society. So military service will help us, will help us reduce crime and will also create um, employment. You will get paid when you serve the country there. Again, we are going to deal with this thing of illegal immigration. I know when we speak about it, it seems like we are xenophobic, we don't like people. No, it is about loving the people of your country. So us as the Patriotic Alliance, Patriot means you the lover of the country. So we love our country so much that we will prioritize our country first and put the people first. These illegal foreigners, when they come in here, the, the private sector exploits them and, pay, and underpays them so that you, the South African young person, you can sit at home not to have a job. Private sector express them because the running government has opened a door for, for these illegal immigrants to come into the country. Therefore, the, 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 the private sector uses that opportunity and uses it against the country and uses it against you, the young person. So us, we are going to stop this illegal immigration project that is happening so that you can be can be employed and be and, and, uh, and get opportunities that you're supposed to get as a South African. You understand? So these illegal foreigners, ne? it seems like we're against them, but we're not against them. We, we just love our country. We love our people. So we're going to prioritize you. We are going to help you uh, get better jobs. You're going to get paid right. You will be under UIF and all those things. The reason why they are paying them less and they are hiring them in the private sector is because they know that we will not uh, register these people under UIF. We will underpay them and therefore you, the South African young person, you will be left at home not doing anything progressive, not doing anything productive. Therefore, you will be uh, attracted to crime. And then you have a problem in society. So we are, we're going to defeat crime. We're going to defeat unemployment. We're going to defeat illegal immigration by you sending every young person to the military service and deal with this illegal immigration problem. Thanks, Gabelo. Uh, we now move on to the part where you can engage with each other and each other's arguments. Uh, so Gabelo has raised uh, military service as well as the question of illegal immigration. 
floor is yours if you want to respond to anything. Uh, thank you, Siswe. Uh, Siswe, it is not uh, true that uh, illegal immigrants, uh, as he calls them, or foreign nationals, uh, they take South African jobs. It's not true. Even if you can remove all uh, foreign nationals in South Africa today, there will still be no jobs in South Africa. Why there's no jobs? There's a high rate of unemployment. If you look at the expanded definition of unemployment in South Africa, we are sitting with over 14 million young people who are sitting at home unemployed. Others have now lost hope in finding a job. Why there's no job? The economy of South Africa, the way it is, it is a, a capitalist economy. It's not meant to create employment for the people. Even our education system, that's why we say that when we offer free quality education, it will be decolonized so that we offer an education system to South Africans that will create entrepreneurs. It, it, it is entrepreneurs who create jobs. Government, uh, which we look at it, is bloated. And there's a lot of government employees. So how do you do that? How do you absorb young people to get jobs? You create new industries. The EFF is going to create new industries. Like what I've said, that you are going to create industries in where there's mineral resources of this country. We'll, we'll call them industrial development zones, ITZs, in all the strategic uh, 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 across all provinces in South Africa. So why do we do that? So that we, we then make sure that people have jobs where they come from. We don't have everyone coming to look for economic opportunities only in housing. Those opportunities must be available to people where they come from. So we're going to create these industries in uh, Sukukune, in Rotu, in a uh, deep rural case at N, in Eastern Cape, um, in Sarapartman, uh, the deep rural uh, part of the Eastern Cape will create um, the ITZs to create jobs for people. We'll also ensure that there's proper funding for young people to find or to fund their business ideas. How to do that? We are going to build a state-owned bank, a bank that will fund our people. We are going to ensure that a, 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 an agency like the National Youth Development Agency is an agency that works for people who are going to take it to the townships. If you ask me, why is the NYTA having offices here uh, in Jobek instead of having offices in Soweto, in Wamshabia Lingana, in Nkomazi, in Bushpark Ridge, in Deep Rural Limpop? Why? Why do you bring it only in the suburbs where young people will not have access to these services that are offered? So it is not true that uh, uh, foreign nationals finish. There are no jobs. A lot of South Africans have graduated. Let's look at uh, uh, regulated industries um, like the health uh, profession. Go go to uh, any public hospital. There's nurses. The South Africans are working, but there are no jobs in South Africa. The the system has ensured that young people can't find any employment uh, anyway. Why? That's how white monopoly capital exists. They want young people to be only employed at EPWP where they are easily disposable as a labor. Thank you. Thanks for watching SMWX. Before we get back to the episode, I just wanted to let you know the four ways that you can help support this channel if you want to see us growing bigger and better to keep you more entertained and informed. The first way is you can invite me to speak at your company, your school, your institution. You'll see the contact details down below. The second way is that you can become a member of this channel. Become a member or you can give us a thanks. You'll see there's like a heart with a dollar sign in the ribbon below this video. Buy me and the team some coffee for this episode. The third way you can get involved is you can advertise on the channel. Now, I'd much rather the community of viewers would be advertisers on this channel than me going out to people who don't really know about SMWX and trying to explain it to them. So if you're a viewer and you have a business and you want to partner and you love this platform, let's partner on this channel. And then finally, you can buy merchandise, you can buy books. All this is in the description down below. Now let's get back to the episode. Thanks, Mobile. Uh, okay. I yeah. mentioned two points. First, firstly, I spoke about military yeah. service. Then the second one was illegal immigration. And what I want to say is that South Africa is one of the richest countries, but we are just poorly managed. We're not poor. Opportunities can be made here. Just that the leaders that we have right now, they are not creative. They are not innovative. They just want to take our minerals and send them to Europe so that the Europeans can use their creativity to make more money out of what we, what we the, 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 the founders or us who have the resources in our soil, we were supposed to do. So we are the richest country. We are just poorly managed. And again, she foc she chose to focus on the part of, of, of immigration because they, in their party, they believe that illegal foreigners, they must come in and find creative ways to enter the country. Why are they entering? They are looking for jobs. 
yes, not all the jobs are taken by illegal immigrants, but illegal immigrants are part of the problem. And they in EFF, they believe that these people, they must come in and take your job, even if it's not a high-skilled job, but it's still a job. And we need those jobs as South Africans. So us in the PA, we are also going to do um, what we call entrepreneur um, capital fund or capital support system that is going to fund, especially the young people. You know, young people, young, we, we, young people of South Africa, we seem like we, we are made to seem like as if we are people who are not thinkers, creative thinkers. We are not brilliant or not. There are young people who wants to break out, who want to break into great industries like mining and etc. There, there's a lot of red tape that has been put there. When you want to apply for a certain thing, they want you to, to send them so many things that, so that you can, can be disqualified from that opportunity before you even get the opportunity by the requirements. When you apply for things, they don't even respond. You know, there's a lot of things. Us, our, our, our president, Mr. Gaten McKenzie, His Excellency, he entered mining and he saw that, you know what, in this industry, there's a lot of potential and we can make money out of this. But there's a lot of red taping and a lot of regulations that are stopping South Africans, especially, from breaking into these industries. So him breaking into that industry, he knows how to remove the red tape and to make opportunities and make the, the, business, the business environment so conducive that it is attractive to even bring foreign investment so that you as the young person, if you want to apply for business, there is fund. There is fund from the state that will help you to do that. Also, the red taping that happens when you want to uh, do business and all those things will be removed. We will not get so many regular... When you want to apply even for a, for, for a job, they want you for... They want experience. The state will give you experience. That is why I was telling you that we are going to send you to the military so that you can have some experience of saving the country and having skills so that you are not just a person who just finished school but with, without no, no experience. Thank you. Thanks very much. So that concludes the first round of responses. We'll now come back to you, Mobile, and you can, again, respond to the response uh, to your point. Um, some, some questions that have come up, of course, the immigration debate is, is a point of difference between the two parties. Uh, red tape and regulation has just been raised and also this question of uh, military conscription for young people. So uh, uh, you have an opportunity again to take the debate further and then we'll come back to you, Kabeng. Sure. Okay. Let me tell you what the EFF seeks to do. We're saying that we understand that young people can get funding to fund their business ideas. That's why we are saying we're going to establish a state-owned bank that will look at the interest to fund young people. Now, you will know that when you go and ask for a loan at the bank, the first thing they would want is if you've got collateral, you've got bondage, something they can take and repossess in case you fail to pay that loan. And if we're quite honest, majority of young people of this country, they've got no assets under their name. They've just graduated from varsity. They've got this brilliant business idea that can be funded, but because banks do not fund people who don't have collateral or who don't have bondage, therefore they don't get to be funded. Therefore, the EFF state-owned bank will then be able to resolve that problem. Any brilliant idea that you have as a young person, as an entrepreneur, to start your own business will then be funded through the state-owned bank. Therefore, uh, eliminating the issue of young people not having opportunities uh, at their disposal in order to fund their brilliant ideas that they may have. The second thing we're saying that as the EFF is that all young people should be forced to do to be at school. You can't allow a young person to drop out. Every year when we celebrate or when the country celebrates the metric results being uh, released, no one ever asks a question, what happened to the learners who started grade 1 12 years ago and have not made it to grade 12? What happens to the learners that have fallen off the system along the way? Where are they? Who, who goes to look for them? Is the young people who are not in employment, who are not in training, who are not in education, who are sitting and lingering around at home, who are now at the danger of doing drugs and substance abuse because there's no opportunities for them. So it's the EFF who are saying, bring all those young people, train them, give them a skill, force them to go to school. School, that's why in the EFF we say, education will be forced upon you. Why? Because you can't have a young person who's uneducated. How are you going to lead this country? How are you going to make sound 
uh, uh, decisions uh, on issues on which political party to vote for uh, how are you going to base your decision on that if you have not been to school you don't only have to go to a normal uh, uh, schooling route there must also be technical schools that empower young people with technical skills so that they get technical qualifications they're able to be employable to start the job now uh, Let's be honest, South Africans, we can't be led by Amap and Tint. The, the leaders of patriotic alliances, both of them, Kenny and Gaten, they are both uh, just uh, criminals who come from prison. They made their money by um, um, cash in transit. <laughs> Therefore, we, we, the country will never be led by Amap and Tint. The only solution we have is the economic freedom fighters that speaks to the needs of young people of this country. At all material times, it's the EFF that is leading the discourse on any fundamental changes you can think of in this country. Therefore, I think young people must vote for the EFF. Young people must come to the EFF in order for us to provide proper solutions in this country. Thank you. Okay. okay, I don't know if you from the EFF you live under a rock or something because our president has been saying this more than once. Okay, he's from prison, yes, but don't judge the man because he's from prison. Now he has rectified his life and doing great things to advance the country. Do you know the great things that our president has been doing for the country? Or oh, the only thing that you have is the prison mentality, is the prison thing that happened long time ago. Do you know the things that he has been doing to push the country, to help the country go forward? You don't know that. Only no critics. You understand? So let me tell you this. Our, our president made money with mining. Hence, I was speaking about mining that we are going to break into these sectors that are big and they, they seem like they're for white people. We are going to break into them because one of our own broke into that industry and was successful and he knows how to enter. And when we enter the country, when we enter the government, national government, we are going to remove all those things so that even the other young people who have great minds and great ideas and great businesses can also penetrate our industries. So the only thing you can take me with is the thing of prison. Come on. But listen, I wish the ANC was here because the ANC has a lot to answer. You understand? But they are not here. But it's fine. Let me tell you this. Uh, young person, the reason why you must vote for us is the patriotic alliance. You said a lot of things, but I didn't take any, anything of substance that I can speak about. So let me just speak for myself. Young person of South Africa, the greatest thing, one of the things that we're doing, us, or that we believe in as the patriotic alliance, is that we're going to bring back God into schools. And that thing it may seem like we're trying to make people religious or spiritual. No, that thing is going to help society. We have a lot of young people who are slapping teachers in, in school, banking classes, who are corrupt, smoking, bringing weapons inside schools. So if you want to help society, if you want to reduce crime, if you want to have young people, even if, if, even if there's no job or they, they are currently waiting for employment, you, those young people will not yield or go to the avenue of corruption because they will have a, what we call the fear of the Lord. They will have a higher, a higher power, a higher belief that they believe in that will help them to become people who are positive in their societies, not corrupt people who are corrupt in their families and societies and school. We'll have children, learners, who are progressive, even if they are waiting for a job, even if they are maybe, uh, they will not just look for corruption or you know that corruption is a is so attractive. It's, it's easy, it looks like easy money. But when we have people who fear God, they will, they will, they will not be corrupt because they will fear God. The only way to prove that you fear God is that you follow his ways and God will never lead you to corruption. If you want learners and young people who are in good standing, who are good people in society, we help us support this vision of us bring back God, uh, God into schools and your, your vote can help us do that. Great. Thank you very much for a very interesting debate already. And uh, now is the time to ask you some questions from our side and, and, and get you to respond. And of course, you can also respond to each other's responses to the questions. But uh, let me start with uh, you, Mobile, because you did mention women representation. Um, but at the highest levels of EFF leadership, the, the president, the deputy president, there's still uh, a problem with re women's representation. Um, what do you think about that? And is that really true when, it, when we look at the higher levels, also the SG of the party? It's not true. In the EFF, there's top six, which are the officials of the EFF. Now, in the top six, there's three women. Is the national chairperson. Commissar Veronica Mende, the Treasurer General, and the Deputy uh, Secretary General of the EFF. All three of them are women. No, so it's not true that women are not represented. In the entire Central Command team of the EFF, more than 60% of them, of the members of the Central Command team are, are women. 
Now, if you go to all the provinces, uh, the leadership of the provinces, leadership of the region, and even leadership of the branch, the constitution of the EFF says that 50% of the members or the leadership of any structure of the EFF should be women. It's the constitution. So there's no branch, no region, no province that can sit, or even the, the National People's Assembly of the EFF, that can sit and convene and elect leadership, and 50% of them who are elected are not women. If it happens like that, it means that is not a constitutional meeting, because they've done something which is against the constitution of the EFF. It can never pass audit of the EFF. Therefore, women in the EFF are fully represented. Any young women of South Africa who wants to be represented, wants to be heard, must join the EFF. Because that's where their views are unlistened. You can't discuss something about women and they're not part of the discussion. We can't relegate uh, serious issues of women to only be decided by males. It's not true. So in the EFF, women are fully represented. What about the question of state capacity? Because a lot of EFF proposals are, well, we need to hand it over to the state. You, you mentioned the state bank a lot. Yeah. Um, of course, the nationalization of land will go to state custodianship. But we have a problem with a very weak state. So the question is, why would we hand over something to a state that has shown itself to be incapable of delivering uh, for the people? Let me tell you uh, first an example. Now, the state should... Uh, really drive some uh, the strategic sectors of this economy. Why? Let me give you an example with ESCOM. If we relegate ESCOM only to the private sector, then electricity will only be accessed by the rich people of this country. Poor people in the villages will never have access to it. So the state is not in the business of making money. The state is in the business of improving the lives of our people. The state is in the business of ensuring the well-being of the citizens and creating a conducive environment for industries and economies to shine and thrive. So the EFF was saying that we want to build state capacity. Why do we want to build state capacity? For because we have seen that these things of tenderpreneurs is a scam. There's no better way. This is just corruption. Now, a person gets a tender to deliver bottled water. They don't produce the water. They don't hire anyone to produce the water. They don't even produce the bottle that the water comes in. They go to the nearest retail shop, buy the water and deliver. Then they get to be paid. They are not creating jobs. Tender planners, they don't create jobs. They still, they exaggerate the prices. Now, if a school, if you can build a school for 10 million, because of tender planners, they now have to increase the price. So the EFF wants to build state capacity, want to build a, 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 a road agency within a, a, the state. The road agency, the purpose of the road agency is to build roads, bridges, and fix the road. See, uh, road maintenance is a permanent thing. The road must be permanently maintained, re graveled rebuilt, every day. So why not hire quantity surveyors uh, and, uh, and hire them permanently, builders permanently to work for the state? Now that's the EFF wants to do. And RTP houses, they, every year, every month, there's RTP houses that have been built. Why are we not having a housing agent of the state that builds those houses where you don't have to go out for 10? Therefore, we reduce the cost of building those things. Therefore, the money that the state has can be utilized fundamentally to do a lot of things because we've done away with tender system. Tender, tenderpreneurs, people, I, it's corruption and scam. That's what they do. They scam people because they really don't create jobs. Let me come on to one final question, which is about the integrity of EFF leadership, because of course you cast dispersions over the Patriotic Alliance leadership. Um, the VBS report um, was was something that was you know a dent on on the credibility of some EFF leaders, according to some observers. Uh, with with um, the deputy president, uh, one of his relatives being mentioned in in the report. Um, of course, the president um, has faced allegations of corruption going back to the the days of the youth league and the on point tender um so do you think that the eff has leadership that has integrity that that people can trust um given that you criticize the integrity of the patriotic alliance leadership the, the leadership of the eff has integrity and every south african and every person in the world should be able to trust the eff like you have used the vps funny enough all the people who are arrested, who are sentenced and prosecuted on the issue of VBS, there's not even a single person 
who has a membership of the EFF or who was maybe a former leader or a former member of the EFF. All the people who are queuing there, who are being charged with VPS, who are even serving sentences as we speak, none of them is a member of EFF. There's ANC members there. No one's saying anything about that. There's even a, the, the CFO, a Philip Todd. He's not a member of EFF. And they found that he was the lead in all this thing of uh, the collapse of VPS. He's not a member of EFF. Those things of casting aspersions on the leadership of the EFF was meant to taint the image of the EFF as we're approaching the 2019 uh, uh, government election. For because the media houses of this country, they thought that if they were to tarnish the, the reputation of the EFF, South Africans will not vote for the EFF. We've had funny things being said by the leadership of the EFF. The funny part is that we've always asked any one with evidence visit your nearest police station and open a case no one has come forward anyone with evidence go to any uh, authorities of this country whether it be SARS uh, SEPs go there open a case let them investigate but no investigation have come forward this thing is just used to taint the image and the reputation of the leaders of the EFF is just a smear campaign. So right. we're not worried. We've got credible leaders. The commander-in-chief of the EFF, he's a credible leader. He's done a lot of things for society. Look, when we're doing the build-up uh, to the 10th anniversary, we went across the country in each and every province. We adopted an NGO, an NGO dealing with either orphans or disabled children or old age home. We revamped the whole old age. We donated 100,000 to each and every old age. Why did we do that? We wanted them to be part of the ladies of the EFF as we're celebrating the 10th year anniversary. So let me, the ship of the EFF is very credible. Let me ask you one more question and then we'll give you your 10 minutes, Gabelo, and, and various questions there. But what has the EFF done in government? Because it's been, it's, it's in a governing coalition, so to speak, in Joburg, in Ekuruleni, um, to some extent, Nelson Mandela Bay, I think. What have the gains been since the EFF has been in power in, in your last two minutes? Okay, thank you. Uh, we're not in a coalition. We're just serving uh, in those uh, municipalities. Uh, we're not in coalition with anybody. I just wanted that to be clear. And Tewini as well. And uh, Tewini, yes. Uh, the EFF in uh, Ekuruling has done a lot of wonders, even in Jobek. Firstly, even long before we came to be part uh, of the government by participating in the MMCs, we first passed a motion of insourcing in Jobek and in the city of Twane. And those motions were that security guards must be insourced. That was a motion of the EFF. Go and read that motion. Cancel documents are for public consumption. They are available. They can be scrutinized. The EFF ensured that. Now, what we have done here in the city of Johannesburg, where we are, the MMC of Health is an MMC from the EFF, has ensured that she goes to a uh, clinics to make sure now we're going to be opening the first pilot clinic, 24-hour clinic here in the city of Johannesburg. Uh, we're giving laptops so that we're trying to digitalize health system so that you don't have to refill forms. Now your file is lost, what, what that we are digitalizing the health system of the city of Johannesburg in the clinics. We've got an MMC of community safety, uh, public safety, Commissar uh, Clinic. He's doing a wonderful job. He has employed a lot of people. He has created new jobs and things that he says, look, you give me a budget, you say I must employ a, a metropolis only. Why can't we also employ linesmen who are going to control, uh, uh, control traffic at different intersections of the city to ensure that traffic flows smoothly? He was cleaning uh, garbage on the street. People said, no, but that's not a job of an MMC. He says the cars, they have to drive here in these roads that there's a lot of garbage. We've now created a dumping area. It must be cleared so that it can be. There must be ease of traffic flow in a guru lane. You are go, we're, we're doing a lot of stuff. We've got five MMCs and the speaker, and all issues, uh, service delivery issues in a guru lane. They got to be resolved within 24 hours. Why? Because of the MMCs and the speaker there, we will respond efficiently to issues like that. In a tech uh, we found the beaches were closed for the festive season. We reopened them. It's the MMC who did that, uh, of the EFF. But doing a lot in um, um, East London as well. We did a lot of right. stuff. And we'll give, you, we'll give you a chance to come to that in, in the closing round. But you've had your round of questions, Gabelo. Let's come to you. And of course, you, you can respond to anything that's been said. But let me start your launch uh, or the 10-year the ten celebration. Yes. Um, there were suggestions. The stadium was empty. It mm. looked that way. Were you disappointed? And are you not as big on the ground maybe as you are on social media? Okay. The, the launch, the event 
yeah, we had a lot of challenges. So there was also sabotage that was beyond us. You understand? There, there were a lot of buses that were breaking on the roads. You understand? How? That, 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 that is something that is beyond you. A bus breaking from Northern Cape. Sometimes, even if you call the, the, the people who are going to fix the buses, they also they have to come from where the buses started from. And they have to travel for, for some hours and everything. So there were a lot of sabotages around the event. You understand? So what I can tell you about us being big or anything, mm -hmm. you will see us voting season in May or April. I don't know when is the voting day, but you will see our numbers. I don't want to say the event will 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 the event of the of the of our lunch. Uh, we must use it as a measure of measurement to measure if we are big or we are small. You will see our numbers on the event day on the on the day of the elections. That is what I can say. Sure, absolutely. Um, you went to the border recently, yes, and um, I think the the Minister of Defence. Uh, Tandi Modise uh, said that this this was not the right thing to do. You should leave these things in the hands of the state that is that is uh, mandated. Uh, do you think it was a mistake to to go to the border and try to take on or at least give a spotlight to the events when when in actual fact some within the government say that you've gone beyond the bounds of the law in doing so? No, her saying that we must leave such things to the hands. There were no hands. There are no hands there. You don't have patrollers, the army is nowhere to be found, even border management was not there. If we if we were there for three days and uh, we didn't meet soldiers or border management, then it means those people whom we stopped, they could have came in, in numbers. I'm sure now the more are coming in because we are not there and the army is not also there. So as we are showing the spirit of patriotism, we are showing that we love our country. Therefore, we'll defend our country, we'll do the little that we have to show South Africans that we truly love this country. And if we are if we are able to contribute our time, the state is not paying us for that. We went there voluntarily. We are also risking our lives. So if we are, if we can show South Africans that we can do this out of our own resources, what more with the state resources? What can we will we will build a wall there? They will know us, these illegal immigrants and these parties who are pushing for this thing that is happening at the border to continue happening. Us, we're going to build a wall there. Because we love the country so much and we're going to protect this country. This country has laws. But the laws also need to be litigated. They need to be enforced. So us, we, will, we believe in the law of South Africa. In fact, we're going to add more laws so that we strengthen our country. You understand? So the ANC, the reason why they were saying that is because they are the ones in power and they feel like we are we're exposing their weaknesses or their incompetence. You understand? They are paying people to be there, but people are not there. Where's the money of the state going? They are wasting our resources. And even they themselves, they don't, they don't congratulate us because we are helping them, but they are seeing it as an attack. They are seeing it, ah, you, what, 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 what. No, South true South Africans who are not biased, who are not captured, they loved what we did because we are doing it for South Africans. We are protecting them. We don't know those people who are jumping that, in fact, the, that river was so... A uh, low that season that people were just walking in. You don't know what they're bringing. Besides them coming into for your jobs, they can bring illegal things and come and corrupt this country. So we're we're doing the, that thing out of the love of the country. Let's talk about your experiences in government as well. Um, we had a representative on SMWX from Action SA okay. talking about. Um, how difficult it was to trust the Patriotic Alliance. You've been in coalition in Joburg with the DA side. You're now in coalition, or at least in the governing uh, arrangement in Joburg on the other side. Okay. Do you move between different parties when it suits you, or, or, or is it fair to say that the Patriotic Alliance can't be trusted when it comes to coalitions and their stability? Coalitions is different parties, you understand? So it's not only us. So let me just make one simple example of coalitions to show you that if you have the right people, especially at the top of the coalition, the right things will happen in that municipality or in that province or in the, or in the country. Our president, Mr. Gatin McKenzie, he was a, a mayor in Central Karu. Before him, there was a coalition still. They failed to pay electricity. They couldn't do a lot of things. There was no service delivery and a lot of things. He came in as the mayor. In the first six months, he was able to pay 60 million electricity debt the debt that was already there before he was there so meaning that if you have bad leaders 
bad leaders who will not use their political will and power to advance the country or the municipality, then you will you will always make those questions that can you trust us or not? We've showed it in the central Karu that if we have the right leader at the top, the right things will happen. You understand? The MMCs will fall into place. They will do what needs to be done. If the mayor or the president, we are, we are, it seems like we are heading into national coalition now. If the president is the right person, meaning Mr. Gatton McKenzie, because he showed it as the mayor, that him being there, he removed bucket toilet systems, which were there for decades and decades and decades. He removed it. And do you know what he did? What I loved is that he gave himself pressure. On the day where he was given, uh, he, he was selected, he was appointed as the mayor. He's, he gave himself praise that within 100 days, I'm going to do this and this and this and this and this. And he did it, those things. So we have leaders nowadays who are just telling us what they're going to do. There's no time frame. How, how long will this thing happen? We don't know. Maybe 10 years. There's another one now where the ANC is saying that they're going to build 1 billion. Uh, they, they are developing a housing project of 1 billion. Yet their term is about to end in two months from now. They don't know if they will be here to fulfill that promise that they're making. So as is the patriotic lens, I will not say a lot of things about the, 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 the city of Jube because as we, we have not been the mayor of the city of Jube, but to show you that we can be trusted even in the city of Jube, you can check the portfolio of the transport MMC, Mr. Kenny Kunene. You, will, you can check his track record, what he has been doing on the roads of the city of Jube. Then you will know that we can be trusted with the little. You can, if you want to trust someone with big things, you need to check them with small matters. So we have been checked with small matters that we can be trusted even at national level. Final question for you: How committed are you to to the constitution? Because I hear you say you're gonna build a wall. Mm -hmm. I don't know if if that would be constitutional. Um, your leader has also said he's gonna suspend the constitution. Yes. Create citizen arrest for all quote-unquote, illegal foreigners. Isn't that unconstitutional? The const yeah. Okay. Yet, yet the on the other hand, you say you want to bring the rule of law. Is it the rule of law or is it going against the law? So the constitution, no one can change the constitution. I just want to ask that from you. Can you, can you, can you or can you not change the constitution? You can amend the constitution. Yes. But so, it requires a certain majority from parliament. Yes. Depending so, on the clause. Yes. So us, if we have that, that certain level of percentage of, of votings, we will change the constitution because now, now the life that we live right now, the current lifestyle enforces that we change certain things so that we can become a better country. How can we stick with the old things that we're working for 1994 and back then? And we're into, we are 30 years in the future of democracy. And then we still want to use the things that we established 30 years ago. Now, if we, <laughs> we have laws in this country, but they need to be enforced. This thing of, of people killing each other and then they just give you 15 years, next thing you are out and you're going to kill more people. You will be dealt with, you will feel the might of the law when the patriotic alliance enters national government. You will feel it as we're going to change the the the, 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 the constitution so that it, it can fit what is happening in South Africa right now. Finally, just to make sure that uh, you also have 10 minutes, uh, do you rule out working with the ANC? in the national government, because you've criticized them a lot in this debate. Would you rule out working with them in a national government if they came to you? Okay. Us, we don't mind working with whoever. What we want is to serve people of South Africa. In the benches of opposition, <laughs> you can do nothing. So what's the use of being prideful and sitting at the bench and so that you don't work with certain people? We will work with anyone as long as working with you will give us power to serve the people of South Africa. You understand? So it's not about working with, even in the EFF, we can, as long as we are going to push the South African, the lives of South African forward, we don't mind working with you. You understand? So it's not about who and who, or we don't work with who. No, we just want to serve South Africans. We are patriots. We love South Africa. You understand? So it's not about who's, who are we working with, but we are willing to work as long as we will be able to serve South Africans. And we will have power to create jobs and change the lives of South Africans then. Sunday. Great. Well, that brings an end to the round of questions. And all that remains is for each of you to make your closing arguments. You can respond to anything that has happened in the debate so far. You can make your final plea to voters. And this is a chance to conclude. So Mobile will start with you. And since you started the debate, Gabela will end the debate. And the floor is yours to make your closing arguments. Hey.
Thank you, uh, Sizu. Uh, South Africans, young people of this country, you need to vote for the EFF on this uh, 2024 uh, government elections. We have declared 2024 to be our 1994. Why? Because we are going to use this election to usher in economic power. The state so far, the post-1994 government has only been able to give you political power, which is meaningless because they have not used the political power to transform your lives, to give you jobs, to give you better services. We want to use this year to end load shedding. We want load shedding to end and it must end now. We are tired of load shedding. It has collapsed small businesses in this country has collapsed even big businesses in this country for because no business can sustain itself without electricity we are here now because the light is on if the lights can be off then it means we have cut off this uh, uh, debate it will not proceed so we want to end load shedding we want to give young people of this country and all south africans want to give you jobs and meaningful jobs not epwp where you are cheap easily disposable labor we want you to have a sustainable permanent job that can comes with benefits that comes with pension because that's what people are looking for security we want to give you a state-owned bank that is able to fund entrepreneurs and their businesses that they have we want to give you free quality decolonized education to be able to produce entrepreneurs and be able to uh, produce innovative ideas in the society we want all young people to be at school or to be operating their businesses. There's no young person who's going to calavant the street. We are not going to give up on these young people who are addicted to drugs and substance abuse. We're going to fetch all of them and rehabilitate them back into society to be productive human beings to contribute meaningfully to this country. So as the EFF, you can trust us with your vote for because we don't make these things a promise. We make it a commitment. We've got history where we govern, where we are invited to participate in this government. We have done a lot of wonderful things. We have created a lot of job opportunities in the departments where we are leading, in the city of Joburg, in the city of Ekurule, um, um, uh, uh, in the city of Etegwini. What we say is what we do. We don't flip-flop. What we promise you is what we are going to deliver you. As the EFF, our ideology is a leftist organization movement that believes that a political power without economic power is meaningless. Therefore, we want to nationalize all the strategic sectors of the economy in order to create jobs for people. We don't want any industry that must be monopolized by certain individuals who've got money. We are going to ensure that we deliver quality health care. The health care system of this country has collapsed. It has collapsed because the current leadership has no say, has no political will to fix it. We are going to give you jobs and jobs. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Mobile Cabello, take us away with your final concluding statements. Thank you. So like I said on my previous statement, that for you to trust someone with big matters, you need to check with you need to check them without they deal or handle small matters. Our president has been the mayor in the central Karoo. We have MMCs in, 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 in various um, um, municipalities around South Africa. What you need to do as a young person is not to be told who to vote for. You need to make your own investigation and check which party. We have so many parties, so many parties. So you cannot rely on yourself or your parents telling you who to vote for. You, young person, you, you need to make your own investigation and check who is putting the people or this country first. You need to check for those people. I, as a young person myself, I was in, I was not, I'm a testimony myself, I was not in politics for a long time because I thought that, you know what, these politicians are all the same. And, but no, I saw that, you know what, whether I vote or I don't vote, politics, they affect me. The job that I want, employment, education, opportunities, those things, they are controlled or influenced by political power and will. So you need to enter politics, young person, and don't just enter politics because someone is telling you who to vote for. But you make your own investigation. Don't rely on your parents also telling you who to vote for. Because later on, they, have their, they know why they are voting for, 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 for whoever they are voting for. So Luena, be independent and be mature and go make your own investigation about which party, who do you want to represent you, who do you want to bring new opportunities. And the only way for you to do that is to check the track records of different parties. And me joining this party, this is the first party that I've ever joined, Patriotic Alliance. 
the reason why I joined this party is is because of their track record. I saw what they are doing. They did not start big. We started small and humble, but we are growing. Our trajectory has been upward and forward only since the day we started. And the only the, the reason why we are growing is that they, you know, the 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 uncaptured people of South Africa, the people who are not biased, they can see the work that we do on the ground. We are not big in 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 videos and promising people, but they can see what we do in communities. That is why they are coming in and they are joining us so that we can advance this country forward. So young person, make, make your own investigation. But I want to tell you this, as you are making that investigation, go check the patriotic alliance, go check the track record of where the patriotic alliance has uh, received power to be in certain municipalities and check what they have done and you will see that the patriotic alliance is is the new thing that is happening in this country and we are going to change this country and with your vote we can do that we can even change the constitution so that i'm speechless patriotic alliance <laughs> Spong, eh? thank you salute <laughs> Uh, thanks so much. Cabello Pizzo is the Youth League Deputy Secretary General for the Patriotic Alliance. Let's uh, give it up in the comments for him. And uh, Nubile Mfongo is a Member of Parliament for the EFF as well as the Coordinator for Youth and Students. It's not easy to come before a public platform and engage in a debate. So in the comments, you know, let's engage with people's arguments. Let's not be personal in our comments and just to thank you both for uh, making strong cases for both of your parties. It's going to be an interesting election, and we're really glad that you were the first ever two participants in the election series. So, thank you. Uh, thank, you thank, you thank you for hosting us. Thank you for hosting us. The pleasure was mine. Aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs>